Well, I, I never had any other idea in my entire life uh, that I wanted to do except write. Do you know a song that they're still playing now called Dusty Skies? I wrote that when I was 12 years old. And they were looking for songs to record in, in Hollywood then, all the country artists and everything. And, and they'd come from uh, Nashville then to Hollywood to record. And so I, I, had, I was writing for uh, uh, Roy and Dale and for the Sons of the Pioneers. And uh, I was having some fairly good success, don't you see? And of course, uh, uh, Lone Star Trail was on the charts, it charted. And uh, so uh, I decided, well, I've got to have a recording by Bob Wills. He's one of the hottest things on the, on the charts, you know, at that time. He had uh, San Antonio Rose, and he was playing uh, all over the country, and, and, I, and so I, I didn't know how to get in touch with him. So I went to DECA. I was recording for DECA then. I said, how do I get in touch with Bob Wills? And they said, well, he's not here. He's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, I said, well, do you know how I could reach him? I, I said, I want to get a song by him. And they said, well, uh, just send, send what you want to to Kane's Academy in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so I had Dusty Skies. You remember me telling you about that? And uh, I went home. I, I, I said, well, I'm going to write something. So I went home and I wrote Cherokee Maiden, and I wrote Blue Bonnet Lane. Mr. Mayo was, Mr. was uh, <clears throat> Bob Will's manager. So I said, uh, I have some songs I'd like to, for Bob Wills to hear. And I said, maybe you've heard one of my songs by Bing Crosby, see? I said, Lone Star Trail. And he said, oh, yeah. He said, I like that song. said, I paid special notice because I heard that you were from Texas. And do you know what he did? He got my address, and Bob Wills and Mr. Mayo and Tommy Duncan, they came to our apartment. And my mother played the songs for them, and uh, they picked out five of my songs though I'd love to have something by Roy Arbison. And so uh, I came home and, uh, oh, I wrote a basket full of songs. Nothing, nothing really, uh, you know, grabbed me. And so finally I wrote, to, let's see, Love Star, Shadaroba, and Dream Baby. And so uh, Mama made the, the demos for me. And so I was going to mail them to Fred. And and the way I did that, I'd have a little box. And you know, you make a little nest for the for the uh, tapes that you'd put in there. The, I, I used to use a reel-to-reel -reel then. And this is in the little boxes, you know. And so I was uh, going to send three songs. And uh, I put them out on the table back there. And Mama came by and she said, what's missing out of the box? What'd you take out of the box? I said, oh, I took out Dream Baby. I said, it's, it's monotonous. I said, it's Dream Baby, Dream Baby, Dream. I said, I don't, I don't believe I'll send that Mama. She said, if you don't send that, you haven't got nothing to send. <laughs> it is. And I said, well, you really believe in that? She said, yes, I do. She said, that's the only thing you've really got in that box. And I, I said, okay, I'll put it back in. So I put it back in. And uh, about three weeks later, uh, Fred called me and says, 
how's the weather down there? And I said, oh, man, it's a cold, cold day. And he said, well, I got something that's going to warm the cockles of your heart. <laughs> and he played Roy Orbison's recording of Dream Baby. I nearly fainted. They misunderstand. Uh, the writers, they, and people would say, did you ever have any trouble getting your songs done because you were a woman? I said, well, no. I said, what the artists wanted, and I usually work to the artists, I said, they just want a good song.